you would think that after a hundred years of documented history on tornadoes, we would have already made a consistent effort to design homes to withstand tornadoes. But looking back in early 2021 and 2020, where a few outbreaks caused billions of dollars in damage, that's just not the case. So I kinda asked a few people, what would we need to construct tornado resistant homes? Concrete, concrete, concrete. I mean, they're right. Any type of tornado shelter that I've designed has either been a combination of concrete, precast concrete, or concrete masonry units. There's actually a few downsides to using concrete and masonry to create tornado resistant homes. The first one being initial cost. The concrete material isn't cheap and the labor to be able to build it isn't cheap either. Now masonry is cheaper than concrete, but in order to get masonry up to a tornado resistant level, costs is a lot of money. The next reason is our current building codes aren't really suited for concrete construction. If we're gonna be constructing homes out of concrete and CMU much more regularly, then that means we need a massive movement in education and training to adopt concrete construction practices regularly. Then the last is about the culture of, of home ownership in this country. Home ownership is more about living the American dream than it is about having a place that shelters and protects us. Instead, we use homes as symbols of wealth, as passive income generators. Home in this country are typically larger than what we need to be able to store stuff that we don't use. Now, honestly, I don't have a problem with it. My point is that universal concrete construction would require us to rethink our space requirements. I just don't see the average family being able to reduce their space requirements by 30 to 50% to pay for tornado protection using concrete no matter how much it improves their quality of life. And with that, I began designing a tornado resistant home out of wood. A tornado resistant home in Austin has less structural requirements than an Amarillo. That's because this map gives us the minimum wind speeds the home needs to be designed for. This is based off historical data on where tornadoes frequently occur and where the strongest tornadoes could occur. We're going to focus on this region for our home. In addition to designing the home for snow, rain, wind, and earthquakes, the walls and roof structure must be impact resistant, meaning it must be able to withstand a two x four weighing 15 pounds, hitting the wall at 100 miles per hour, 67 miles per hour for a roof with minimal damage. So what proved to be really difficult is trying to find a wall section that would meet this impact criteria. But lo and behold, Texas Tech University has done a bunch of research on a bunch of different wall panels. Some of the wall sections that I thought would be suitable are not, but I found one and I think this might be a winner right here. So, so I'm gonna do some more design work and if it turns out I can get this wall to work, um, I'm gonna roll with it. The wall and roof structure were designed to be about five times stronger than the average house in the Midwest. My calcs are showing that I can get it to work, so. Um, so I'm going to grab me some snacks, call it a day. The first thing to mention about the foundation is to provide a large enough system to counter the suction uplift forces that act on the roof because of the high wind forces. And the second thing is the foundation actually sticks out of the ground. Some of the storms that tornadoes are associated with carry a lot of rain and can cause flash flooding. So the finished floor elevation is about a foot higher than the 100 year flood elevation. So now if we take a look at this wall section, we have this three quarter inch layer of plywood, double two by six wall studded 16 inches on center, 12 gauge sheet of steel. So research from Texas Tech University shows that this wall section is capable. The two by four that was launched into it was destroyed twice. This area wall had to be framed with engineered studs because of its height. The remaining walls can utilize Douglas fir or a better species of lumber. Wood roof profiles haven't been tested as extensively as wall sections, but we can use the existing data from wall sections to make a judgment call. Two layers of plywood, one layer of 14 gauge steel sheet. So this profile was tested at speeds below 130 miles per hour, the missile deflected off of it. So in this scenario, it might be quite a bit overkill. We only need to be tested for 67 miles 
miles per hour and this is passing with flying colors, this profile could actually be our wall section as well. It's not dependent upon the spacing of the studs to develop its impact resistance. Part of the reason why I went with it for this roof. So I mean, just following the rules, I think I have a structure here that meets the requirements of being a, a tornado shelter or in this case, a tornado resistant home. I didn't cover any mechanical or electrical requirements, but meeting those requirements are also required in order for you to have a tornado resistant home. Doors and windows need to be rated as impact resistant per the parameters for your particular project. So in this case, the 100 mile per hour projectile requirement. I didn't talk about the connections between the roofs and the wall and the wall to the foundation, but considering this house is five times stronger than a typical Midwestern home, most of your connections are gonna be through some piece of hardware. Now, the only way we can prove this works is if we build this home and test it against an EF5 tornado, but maybe someone would like to recreate and test a scaled model of this in a lab. I hope you learned something new as I did while producing this. If you found this interesting, please leave a like or a comment below. And by liking or commenting, it helps me determine if I should make more unique content like this.